because I'm back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back. As the NBA playoffs continue to unfold, a lot of the attention has been given to the best teams in the league, and rightfully so. But today, we're going to take a different look at things and focus on the worst teams in the league. Yep, that's right. Today, we are unveiling the first 2022 NBA lottery mock draft. So let's take a look at the lottery teams and mock them. Here are my projected lottery picks in the 2022 NBA draft. To determine who picked where, I went by the default tankathon order to keep it as realistic as possible. And also the reason why we're doing just the lottery for this initial mock draft is because oftentimes the needs of playoff teams become more pronounced in the postseason. And since teams later in the draft are more likely to draft based on current roster fit and utility, I'm holding off on projecting the later first round picks until we see how these teams fare in the playoffs. So with the first pick in the 2022 NBA lottery mock draft, the Houston Rockets select Chet Holmgren. This might be the most wide open number one pick race in recent memory, but I have the Rockets taking Holmgren here. To me, Chet just has the most avenues to start him among guys at the top of this draft. I can see him becoming an all-star in a variety of roles, whether he's a defensively oriented rim protector or a supersized wing creator. The possibilities with him are endless, and if he manages to become this all-defensive level center with the ball skills of a wing, then we may be looking at one of the most unique players the game has ever seen. For the Rockets though, a team that ranked dead last in defensive rating this past season and gave up a league worst 53 points a game in the paint, Holmgren is a pick here due to that elite shot blocking talent and anything else would be a massive bonus. At two, I have the Orlando Magic taking Duke forward Paolo Bancaro. Due to his basketball feel and scoring talent, I see Bancaro as a playmaking hub in the mid post. He's shown several times at Duke that he has the passing vision necessary to make teammates better in the NBA, and his polished back to the basket scoring package offers a lot of potential as well. I think he'll be a decent perimeter shooter, but I don't think he needs a great outside shot to be an effective NBA player. For the Magic, a team that struggled with turnovers and playmaking, Bancaro provides a really nice connecting piece for their offense that should help smoothen out a very talented young core. With the third overall pick, the Pistons are thrilled to land Auburn's Jabari Smith Jr. The main appeal with Smith is his combination of size and shooting as a 6'10 forward drilling over 40% of his threes in college. The Pistons were 29th in the NBA in three-point shooting this year, only knocking down 32.6% of their attempts. So adding a guy like Smith who can get his shot off at any time will be a massive upgrade. He'll be a weak side threat in pick and roll, which should open more things up for Cade Cunningham. And defensively, Smith's size and fluidity makes him a very versatile option with high weak side shot blocking potential. At four, I have the Thunder taking Shaden Sharp. The Thunder usually surprise people on draft night. Think of Josh Giddy last year, and I'd imagine they go a similar route by taking the high school phenom Shaden Sharp. Sharp is a smooth 6'6 scoring wing with great vertical pop and outstanding length. While he might still return to Kentucky, my guess is that he's projected to go top 10, he'll stay in the draft. Sharp gives Oklahoma City another high-end scoring prospect with breakout star potential, who should fit in well next to Josh Giddy and Shea Gilgis Alexander. At 5, I have the Pacers staying local and taking Jaden Ivey. Ivey's open floor athleticism and playmaking provides a nice complement to the skills of Tyrese Halliburton. Indiana was in the bottom third of the league in transition points a game this year, and Ivey would bolster that attack immediately. While I'm not sure just how legit of a prospect Ivey is as a primary creator, having a guy like Halliburton next to him would make his life a lot easier. Ivy gives the Pacers some much needed athletic pop in the backcourt and offers real potential to become a dynamic guard in the near future. With the Damian Lillard situation unknown in Portland, I have the Blazers drafting for total upside and taking AJ Griffin from Duke at 6. While he's had issues with injuries throughout his entire high school career, Griffin managed to put together a really impressive season at Duke given initial expectations. The 6'6", 220-pound wing drilled an impressive 45% of his threes while averaging around 10 points a game, and his shot making and athletic tools have put scouts on notice. While Griffin does look somewhat clunky at times, and I'm not personally sold on his functional athleticism, there's no debate that he was one of the most efficient freshmen in college basketball this season. Since Portland isn't in any position to consider fit when drafting this year, Griffin is the pick as he most likely will be seen as the best player on the board at this point. Once again, the Kings find themselves in the lottery. After trading away Tyrese Halliburton in one of the more confusing moves of the season, the Kings would be wise to target wings in this year's draft. With their backcourt of De'Aaron Fox and Davion Mitchell seemingly locked in, and Demontis Sabonis down low, it makes sense for Sacramento to add some size and versatility to their roster. For that reason, I have them taking Arizona's Benedict Matherin here. Matherin is a freaky athlete at 6'6", and has a scoring polish to be a valuable off-ball weapon offensively and his shooting should be an added benefit for a team that struggled from behind the arc. On defense, Matherin has shown flashes of being disruptive, 
but we're still waiting for him to put it all together on that end. New Orleans gets the 8th pick here from the Lakers as part of the Anthony Davis trade, and I have them taking Dyson Daniels, the Australian guard from G League Ignite. Seen as one of the top defensive prospects in the draft, Daniels is a high field prospect who would be a great add in New Orleans. He's a capable decision maker and playmaker at 6'8", and that size allows him to be used in a variety of ways, especially if his outside shot improves. The potential lineups New Orleans can throw out there defensively with guys like Herbert Jones and Jose Alvarado would be frightening, not to mention the fit he'd have with Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson offensively. Daniels is just the ultimate play-connecting big guard that a team like New Orleans would really love to have. The Spurs narrowly miss getting into the playoffs, but having a lottery pick here is a fine consolation prize for them as they are at least a few years and pieces away from contention. San Antonio has guards up the wazoo, headlined by first-time all-star DeJounte Murray. So I have them taking Iowa forward Keegan Murray here at 9. Murray had one of the more impressive scoring seasons in college basketball as he averaged 23.5 points a game on 55-40-75 shooting splits, and his versatility is a draw here as he's strikingly comfortable shooting off movement for someone his size. Even with that fluidity, he's also strong enough to attack defenders in the post and finish through them. Getting Murray here allows the Spurs to bolster their wing depth as he can play either the 3 or 4 in the modern NBA. At 10, I have the Wizards taking Wisconsin guard Johnny Davis. Washington lacks off-ball guards that can play next to Bradley Beal. At a strong 6'5", Davis can play next to Beal while also allowing Washington to stay solid on the perimeter defensively, which is crucial for a team that ranked 25th in defensive rating this past season. Adding his backcourt size along with his ability to score through contact and make tough shots will be the main appeal for the Wizards. And while they won't need him to go into takeover mode like he did for most of the year at Wisconsin, he should be able to add to a promising group of role players emerging in Washington. I have the Knicks taking Kansas wing Ochai Igbaji at 11 here. I think Igbaji projects well as a guy who can score at all three levels in a secondary role. New York really struggled scoring the ball this year, and I think Igbaji's athleticism at the rim and three-point shooting will really help them get easy baskets either in the half court or in transition. While I still think the Knicks need a viable table setter to get the most out of guys like RJ Barrett, grabbing an NBA-ready college star like Igbaji is too good of an opportunity to pass up at this point in the draft. Already having grabbed Shaden Sharp at 4, I have the Thunder taking Memphis big man Jalen Duran. After he reclassified to join the 2021 recruiting class, many thought Duran was in for a massive season for the Tigers. While he didn't entirely disappoint, Memphis' season had so much turmoil, especially at the beginning of the year, that Duran started getting overlooked a bit in terms of the draft. Still, even in a year that failed to live up to expectations, Duran should be seen as a lottery pick. At 6'11", 250 pounds, Duran is built like a truck and is great at using his strength to overwhelm opponents. That being said, he's also very fluid in traffic, especially when he's running the floor, and also swatted two shots a game in college. For Oklahoma City, who is still looking for that anchor big man to strengthen their overall defense, this should be considered a great pick. The Hornets desperately need a big guy who can catch lobs and produce out of pick and roll with LaMelo Ball. For me, Duke center Mark Williams is the guy here. Williams averaged around three blocks a game and was really the anchor for Duke defensively. Charlotte ranks second to last in defensive rebounding rate, so Williams, a guy who grabbed 7.5 boards a game for Duke, should really help with that. He carves out space extremely well on both ends, and his hustle on the offensive glass, length around the basket, and rim running ability will make LaMelo Ball's life a lot easier, while also adding fluidity to the Charlotte offense. And with the 14th overall pick from St. Vincent St. Mary's High School, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Le Malachi Branham wing from Ohio State. If it were up to me, Branham would be a top 10 guy in this class, but he's likely to go into teams at this stage of the pre-draft process. A smooth 6'5 scoring guard, Branham had a better than expected freshman season as he averaged close to 14 points a game on 50% shooting and 42% from three. He lacks the playmaking chops at this point to be considered a viable on-ball creator at the next level, but if you put him next to a guard like Darius Garland, then I think he would thrive as a guy who can hit shots off the catch and create his own offense as well. Branham also has a plus wingspan and is shown to be impactful defensively when fully locked in, and simply put, I think Cleveland is looking for another perimeter scorer since most of their current building blocks are big men or defensively inclined wings. To me, Branham provides the upside and NBA-ready skill set to be worthy of a lottery selection here. And with that, I'll wrap up my first set of predictions for a 2022 NBA Draft. Thanks so much for watching, and more videos will be on the way soon.